taking a look at the Pittsburgh Penguins and what they've done over the last couple of seasons. Of course, winning back-to-back -back cups in 15-16, 16-17, and then exits in the second round, the first round, and the quarterfinal round. Take a look at what they've done so far in the offseason, bringing guys like Mark Jankowski, Kasperi Kaplan, Mike Matheson, and Colton Sevier, but a couple of big subtractions here, uh, especially in net, Matt Murray there. Patrick Hornquist is another guy. Patrick Marlowe, he's going back to San Jose. So, Johnny, you look at the ads, these subtractions, and where this team has been the last couple of years. Uh, what do you make of what they're doing this offseason and where they're heading right now? Is the direction north or south? Feels kind of lateral. Okay. They're, they're kind of just treading water right now. I, I think they recognize that they want to change their team, the complexion of it, uh, some personnel on it uh, to try to get better results because they have very high expectations. They understand that Malkin and Crosby together as a cup-winning duo does not last forever, even though it's been incredible as long as it has lasted already. So they're trying to make some changes, but they're, the cap situation, the contracts haven't allowed them to really bring in too many impact-type players. So it feels like they're just kind of treading water right now. How about the losses and the loss of a guy like Patrick Hornquist? We know what he brings to the table on the ice and his office right in front of the net and stuff. Mm -hmm. What about the impact of a guy off the ice, his intangibles and what he brings to that dressing room? This is part of the fabric of those teams that did a lot of winning and having been there down between the benches when I watched Pittsburgh win games, Patrick Hornquist is such a fierce competitor and he's one of the few guys who would ever be comfortable enough to stand up to Sidney Crosby. Or stand up to Evgeny Malkin and either say, play better, or that's a bad play, or give me the puck here. And I've seen them, in a healthy way, get right after each other. And that's a good thing, something that all teams need. And I think it's not necessarily the 15 goals he might have scored next year or, or, or the 35 points he might get. It's just that kind of personality, that drive, the same kind of drive that says, as soon as they're thinking about trading him, I'm waving my no trade because I don't want to be here right. if they don't want me here. And that kind of... That kind of competitor is, is the guy that they're going to miss more so than the production, which they probably can replace. All right, so they're bringing in a guy like Kasperi Kapanen to play with number 87, but we've learned that not everybody can play with Sidney Crosby. What does it take to play with him and keep up with him? An offensive level, but on some level that is compatible with Sidney Crosby. And that's not for everyone, and that doesn't mean that Kapanen is not an NHL player or a good one. But just we've seen it over history on Olympic teams where they put the best player with them and it does not work for Sidney Crosby. I think what they're hoping for is something like Pascal Dupuis, but better. You know, a guy who can skate really, really fast, has a good shot, works well with Sidney Crosby in the give and go game, strong on the puck and then can cash some of Crosby's goals while also being defensively reliable for Sid. That's what they're hoping for. I, I am concerned that maybe that might not mesh as perfectly as they will hope. Uh, Kaplan's very much a straight line guy. And he goes really fast in one direction. I don't know if he can absorb everything around the rink the way Crosby needs his wingers to at the level that Sid is used to. Maybe I'm wrong. That'll be something to find out as they get going. Uh, if it works well, then, then he'll be a good fit there. But if it doesn't, then, then there'll be a hole there. Yeah, we've seen it before. It looks good on paper. It doesn't exactly translate on uh, the first couple of games of the season. Uh, Tristan Jari seems to be the number one guy right now. Matt Murray signs that deal in Ottawa. Marc-Andre Fleury, he's long gone and doesn't look like he's coming back anytime soon. Tristan Jari, he by default is your number one. Is he ready for that type of role? And the very fact that you say that, he's not, we haven't said that about him in the NHL. He's the guy. And, and you look at his splits. Early on, oh my goodness, lights out. Best goal in the league. Yep. First, first 20 starts. And then after that, not so much. Now again, reflective of the team that's playing in front of them. They didn't play as well down the stretch. But physical of having to play all the time. Now Casey Dismiss a pretty capable backup as well. But if you're going to play 75% of the games, there is a physical taxation that that will demand. And then the other part of it is the mental and emotional, where you're the guy. The team is going to sink or swim based on how you play. Not because you're outplaying Matt Murray, who's also there to help you. It's just on you and how he deals with that pressure, how he deals with some of that mental fatigue will uh, determine whether Pittsburgh has a su successful season. Uh, combined cap hit of both those guys. That's Jarry great. Smith, I mean, the, the dollars are right. Dollars, right. If yes. it works out, if not, uh, you see some other teams with the high price tags for 1 and 1A, one and, you know, we know how that plays out as well. We'll just have to see how yeah. this plays out for Pittsburgh moving forward.